Hi, I am Dr. Archana and along with my colleagues Dr. Jaya and Professor Shiva Shanmugam from Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute from the small union territory of Puducherry in the southern part of India. In the era of regional anesthesia practice prior to the use of ultrasound we have expressed brachial plexus blocks above the clavicle with a reference to anatomical landmarks like the interscalene groove or the pulsation of the subclavian artery. After over two decades of ultrasound practice, we have achieved clear visualization of these neural elements, but we are still continuing to describe these elements using vague nomenclatures like bunch of grapes, clusters, subfacial or extrafacial. This is essentially because there is a lack of corroborative evidence between the sonoanatomy and the actual anatomy. So we aim to first corroborate the sonoanatomy with actual anatomy and then describe these signs for consistently recognizable patterns on the ultrasound. So we set out on a journey to the truth. How you ask? With the help of our dear colleagues in anatomy, Drs. Prabhavati and Prof. Raj Shekhar and their team, Mr. Vela Murugan and Mr. Madhivanan, we obtained a cadaver and proceeded with a very unconventional means of dissection using whatever tools we could think of. First, the cadaver was sectioned. Then it was scanned with the ultrasound to identify the brachial plexus elements. These elements were then individually tagged And then the skin was marked along the same plane. With a knife, we sliced exactly along that plane. And with this, we hope to achieve actual anatomy cuts as we see on the sono anatomy. Each of these specimens were then dissected out and traced back to identify what the actual structures were. So what were our findings? Well, at the C5 level, in the sono anatomy, we assume that it is the C5 root appearing above the C5 bifid transverse process. An inspection of the actual anatomy revealed that our assumption was true. So, we concluded that the single round hypoechoic structure appearing on top of the M shaped hyperechoic white line with the post acoustic shadow was in fact the C5 root coming over the C5 transverse process. At the C6 level, we assumed that it is the C6 root that appears above the bifid C6 transverse process. The actual anatomy revealed to us that it is true. So to conclude here, the C6 appears as a single round hypoechoic structure appearing on top of the bifid C6 transverse process. At the C7 level, our assumption is that the C7 root appears over the flattened transverse process of the C7. Actual anatomy reveals this to be true. The single hypoechoic round structure is the C7 root on top of the C7 transverse process which has only a posterior tubercle. At the C8 level, we assume that the C8 root appears over the transverse process of the T1 vertebra. But actual anatomy revealed here that the C8 root was on top of the first rib and the transverse process of the T1 was deep to it. So in retrospect, we had noticed that on the scanning image, just proximal to this point, the transverse process was visualized, but the C8 root was not clearly identifiable. So to conclude here, we state that when a clear C8 root is visible on the ultrasound, it is above the first rib. Identification at the T1 proved to be a little trickier. After identification of the C8 above the first rib, which appeared as a continuous hyperechoic line, further scanning distally revealed that there was a break in this line. After this break, we noticed that there is a single round hypoechoic structure which appears below the first rib. This we assumed to be the T1 root. The actual anatomy confirmed our assumptions, revealing that the T1 root was below the rib and above the pleura. And last but not least is the bunch of grapes. So when we looked at the actual anatomy, it revealed that what these grapes were. 
What they were was, they were the anterior and posterior divisions of the upper trunk, along with the middle trunk and the inferior trunk, which was present in the so-called eight-ball corner pocket behind the subclavian artery, all elements sitting on top of the first rib. During dynamic scans using a traceback method, we recognized that there were several patterns that we could allocate signs to. So, the first sign that we propose is the sun rising sign to identify the roots. The hypoechoic roots appear as a sun rising, but the environment from which it rose varied between the levels, relating the structure of the transverse processes. So we start with the C5, which appears to be rising out of two mountains representing the bifid transverse process. At the C6, it rises out of two mountains as well, but the difference between the C6 and the C5 is that there is a prominent anterior tubercle at the level of the C6. At the C7, it appears as if the root is arising out of a single mountain, which represents the presence of only the posterior tubercle. The C8 appears to be rising out of the C because it is the rib and not the transverse process. T1 is a little more complicated than this, where it appears as if the T1 root is taking a U-turn. Hence, we've assigned this as a U-turn sign. So as the root appears to take a U-turn around the rib from below to above. This, however, we need to remember is a paradox. Because even though we describe it as a U-turn, it must be remembered that the same root arises posteriorly below the rib and then travels anterolaterally up on top of it. Now, once all of these roots are identified, most of the hard work is done. Now, it's just a matter of tracing all of these roots to their ends, where they transform into the trunks and the divisions. The C5 and the C6 roots join to form the upper trunk. And once you trace them even further, the upper trunk becomes the anterior and posterior divisions. The C7 continues alone to be the middle trunk. And then the C8 root and the T1 root combine to form the inferior trunk. We now hope that some light has been shed on what are the actual brachial plexus elements that are present on the sonoanatomy above the clavicle. Thus allowing you to scan the brachial plexus with much more objective targets. Proving the fact that seeing is believing, I thank you for your time.